Earn throw. Wait, when did I launch? Sorry. Oh, oh, my God. oh, at the end. Cave wins. Right there. It's on the board. What do you mean cave wins? We oh. asked, like, people had asked what time has launched, like, four other times. And I, oh. it's like, how many more times are you going to have to say this? I'm like, at least one. See how she shot it. You got this. Shot and you were the one. Dang it. All right. Oh. So, today, we're going to just take a baby step forward kind of continue on talking about what we've been talking about with regard to rational functions. We're just gonna to put together all the pieces we've done today, add in one more additional skill to be able to generate the graphs for these things. So, uh, graph the rational function. To do this, we need to find vertical asymptotes, movable discontinuity, x-intercepts, y-intercept, and then the horizontal or slant asymptotes. So those five things. Which one do you want to find first? Uh, okay, vertical asymptotes. <laughs> Let's do the removal discontinuity at the same time because they really, you'll find them at the same time if you're doing this. Uh, what do we need to do first to do that? Factor the function, good. So x squared minus four factors two. Excellent. Is there any reducing that can occur there? No. No. So there's no removal discontinuity because there's no reducing that can happen. To find the vert. Well, can only occur if there's reducing. It doesn't always happen if it reduces, but if there's no reducing, you can't have one. Uh, to find the vertical asymptote, what do we do now? Good. Set the denominator equal to zero. And then we use our zero product property to set each of those equal to zero. Stop talking, please. So we get two vertical asymptotes. Okay. What's, what one do you want to find next? We still have x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and then the horizontal or slant asymptote. Okay. Okay, great. How do we find those? Yeah, we take the reduced numerator and set that equal to zero. So we get the point one zero. That was easy. The y-intercept you want to do next, okay. How do you do that? Good, we just plug zero in for x. So we get the point zero, one over four as our y-intercept. And then the last thing is those horizontal and slant asymptotes. What do we have to do to find those? Yes, and to tell the difference between the three cases, we need to look at the uh huh. And what about the starting equation? The degree, right? What degree is the first? Is the numerator? What degree is the denominator? Two. So that was case one. In case one, we always have y equals zero. So does that mean that? Uh, no, it just means that that horizontal asymptote is actually just an end behavior. That we're going to cross there, but it'll cross only at that one spot. Right. Otherwise, it'll be asymptotic, which is a fun word to say. All right. So I'm going to draw, start drawing my graph now. So I'm going to start by drawing in my asymptotes first. So I'll draw it x equals negative 2. So there's my vertical asymptote at negative 2. And then x equals positive 2. There's my vertical asymptote at positive 2. And then y equals 0. So there's my horizontal asymptote. And then I have the point 1, 0 and the point 0, 1 fourth. And now I need to draw in the rest of my graph. So what I need to decide here is should I have a piece like this? Or should I have a piece like that? I'm going to figure that out 
by seeing what happens as I get as I plug in values to my function closer and closer to x equals negative 2 but still values less than negative 2 so I'm going to start by typing in my function into my calculator so I have x minus 1 over x squared minus 4 and then I'm going to do vars, y vars, function, y1. And I'm going to pick some values that are getting progressively closer to negative 2, but are still less than negative 2, and just see what happens. So maybe negative 2.1, negative 2.01, negative 2.001, what do you notice is happening to each of those values? They're getting smaller, right? Because they're more negative. So which way should my arrow be pointing at the asymptote? Down. So I know that I should have that. Everybody's okay? Now here, I need to see, well, really, I know that it's going to have to do this, right? Yeah. Because if I tried to go from below, I'd be crossing, have to cross the x-axis, and I know it can't cross until we get to 1. Yeah. So I know I have that part. Then I need to decide, is it going to do this, or is it going to do that? So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plug in some values that are getting closer and closer to 2, the location of that x-intercept, or that vertical asymptote, but still less than 2 the whole time. So about 1.9 and then 1.99 and 1.999 and we're headed down. So I know I want that piece. And then the last part, I just need to decide whether I want which piece I want. Again, should I be going arrow pointing down at the asymptote or arrow pointing up at the asymptote? I'm going to do that the exact same way. I'm going to just plug in values that are getting closer and closer to 2, but are still bigger than 2 the whole time. And what am I noticing? They're getting bigger. So I should have the one pointing up. So that guy goes away. And there's my graph. Can you just sit down here and calculate it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should matter. If you get graph on your calculator in a standard window, you should get something that looks pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's do the next one. Okay, uh, so what, we start with vertical uh, asymptotes and removal discontinuity again? Uh, so how do I factor 2 minus x? Okay, that's prime. And how do I factor x plus 3? Okay, what does that tell me about the removal discontinuities? That can't reduce because they're both prime. So to find the vertical asymptotes, I just take the denominator, set it equal to 0, and I get one vertical asymptote this time. We did the x-intercepts next. How do I find those? Yep. I take the reduced numerator and set it equal to 0. So I got the point 2, 0. Then we did y-intercept next. So there we just plug zeros in. We have the point zero two thirds. And then the last piece we need is that horizontal asymptote or slant asymptote. What do we have to look at to determine this? The degrees. What's the degree in the numerator? And the denominator is also one, good. 
that was case two, so it is leading coefficient of the numerator, which is one. over leading coefficient of the denominator, which is one. positive one. So our HA is at y equals negative one. That's all we need. So let's start drawing our graph. Make myself some space. So again, I'm going to start by drawing in my asymptotes. I'm going to draw in 2, 0, and then 0, negative 2 thirds. So if I look at this, I can draw one part of my graph already immediately, right? Yeah. This has to go like that because it has to pass through that y-intercept and x-intercept. All I have to do now on the other side is decide whether I want the one that points down or the one that points up. How am I going to do that? The same way we did from the previous one. So I'll go update the formula in my calculator. And I need to pick some values that are a little less than negative 3. And what do I notice I'm getting? The down arrow. Oops. Yeah, we did this before when we did the modeling. It's the same keystrokes to get the Y1. I'm just going to be plugging in values that are getting closer and closer to my asymptote without actually crossing the asymptote. All right, uh, last example. Vertical asymptotes and rule discontinuities. We need to start by... Yeah, factoring to see if we can simplify. How does the numerator factor? So x minus 5, x plus 1. Can I reduce? So there's no removal discontinuity. To find the vertical asymptote, we just set the denominator equal to 0. How do we get the x-intercept? Uh, um, yeah, we take the numerator and set it equal to 0. I'm going to do the factored form because to solve a quadratic, that makes life easier. So I have two x-intercepts. How do I get the y-intercept? Zero for x. And usually we like to do that with the original. And then which one which case are we in here? Yeah, the numerator is degree two, the bomb denominator is degree one, so this is case three. So we have to do polynomial division, and Nathan's correctly identified that 
we can do actually do synthetic division here since the denominator is monic leading coefficient one and degree one which is lovely because that saves a bunch of time and work and effort all those things that are in short supply these days So there's my synthetic division. What part of that do we actually care about, though? The one and the Just that part. So that gives me the equation y equals 1x minus 6, and that's my slant asymptote. Everybody's okay with that? Okay. Let's draw ourselves a graph. So I'll draw in my vertical asymptote. How, what do, uh, how am I going to draw in that slant asymptote, though? That's a line, right? How many points do I need to describe a line? Yeah, at least two. So I'm just going to pick some values of x and find the corresponding values of y. So I don't know. Let's pick 0 for x. 0 minus 6 is negative 6, so that's my y. Then I'll pick 6 for x. 6 minus 6 is 0, so that's my y. So there's my asymptotes. Then I need to plot 5, 0, negative 1, 0, and then 0, negative 2.5. Well, one part of my graph I can see immediately how to draw, right? So that part should be obvious to connect those three points. It's got to look something like that. Now my last part, though, I have to figure out, should my graph be in this little angle or should it be in this angle? Right? It should be over here or down here. So I'll do that the same way we've been doing that. So x squared minus 4x minus 5 over x plus 2, right? Yep. And we'll just kind of look at what's happening as we're getting progressively closer to negative 2, but still numbers that are less than negative 2. So I got a negative, more negative, more negative. So that tells me my should be pointing down at the vertical asymptote. So that should be the other part of my graph down there. You guys feel okay doing this? All right. Um, so you guys should be able to do um, let's see, that's not quite right. That's not what I meant to write. So 9 through 24, you guys should be able to do. Um, remember, 13 through 16, we'd already assigned. We just didn't draw the graphs for them. We found all those key features, though. So you guys should now be able to do 9 through 24. 
For Sunday, we're looking for the delta math. You guys are looking for 1 through 8 and then 13 to 16. Um, I'm done here. We did it. So 9 through 24 is next Sunday then? Uh, well, the remainders here. So like 9 through 12 and then 17 to 24 would be for next Sunday. You know what I mean? Um, so when we come back from lunch, that last half hour we have, be productive. Get some stuff done. Mr. Kulik's trying hard not to spend all the class time doing stuff so that you guys have time to like get some stuff done so you don't have, I know it's a crazy week with crazy stuff after school and everything going on. I'm trying hard to get you time to do some stuff so it doesn't, not so much at home. Be productive for me, please, please, please.